Next on BYUSN, welcome to game day. Thursday night hey. football for 19th ranked BYU as they host longtime rival Utah State. Time to get educated on the matchup. Cover or bust? Are we going to see Puka Nakua's high school quarterback Cooper Lagan? How much Gunnar Romney do we need to see? We've got questions and we think some answers, but we'll see, man. I'd just like to see him in at least one drive. Let's go. Welcome, everyone. BYU Sports Nation is live from Lavelle Edwards yeah. Stadium, presented by the BYU Let's Store, go. official outfitter of Let's BYU go. fans everywhere. Yes, another game day. A rare Thursday night matchup for BYU in recent years. Me likey. I am Spencer Linton. He is Rivalry Museum Curator, Jerem Jordan. Now, there is a dinosaur museum across the street here. Uh, perhaps one day the old wagon wheel will be <laughs> because next year it's going to be an artifact. They're not going to play, and whoever wins tonight gets to keep that for the foreseeable future. And, in fact, they got a little polishing last night courtesy of Malik Moore. Rock me mama like a wagon wheel. Rock me mama any way you feel. Oh, hey, see you tomorrow night. Hey, mama. <laughs> That's great. Malik Moore. BYU hoping to uh, keep it. Uh, and we got a loaded show today. ESPN's Matt Berry will join the program. He is the program, as he would say. He is calling the game on ESPN tonight, hosts, hosts college football final, sports center ankle. We're excited to have him uh, ahead of the Utah State game. Game notes, game day guarantees. Big game boomer in the house for this one. We rely on his lists in yes. May, June, and July. Yes. Big game boomer in the house. we got a lot to cover, so let's get after it, starting with today's headlines. Yeah, let's go ahead and rock those headlines like a wagon wheel. 19th ranked BYU, 3-1 and one on the season. will host 1-3 and three Utah State in the battle for that artifact. Kickoff tonight, ESPN, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Big national audience. BYU head coach Kalani Satake says his team needs to be all hands on deck for an ultra-motivated Utah State team. You know, they're, they're going to be excited for this game. Like I said, we're, we need to be used to getting hunted and, and, and find a way to respond back the way we should. And I don't know if we did that well enough on Saturday, and hopefully we get it done on Thursday. Become the hunter. Let's mm. go. Mel Kuyper's uh, updated NFL draft position prospects have Jaron Hall at 7th best QB, Blake Freeland's 6th best tackle, and Clark Barrington at the 4th best guard. Uh, I believe Mel Kuyper still has Zach Wilson as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Because Zach, in his own words, says he's 100% ready and cleared by doctors to play on Sunday. He'll start for the New York Jets, who went 1-2 and two with Wilson out of the lineup. The Jets face the Pittsburgh Steelers Sunday, 1 Eastern on CBS. Winnable game for the Jets. That's not the only thing he's going to start in this week. Number 15 women's volleyball plays at Portlandia tonight, 9 Eastern time. Put a bird on it. The Cougars are 21 and one all time against the Pilots. BYU men's basketball announcing that Midnight Madness will happen on October 13th. Events kick off at 11 p.m. So that's, that's fun. An hour before midnight. Yeah, late Wait, night so basketball. 11 madness. 11 p.m. Madness. More details to come a little bit later. And BYU women's soccer unranked in the United Soccer Coaches Poll, but 20th in the newest RPI. I hate RPI, but uh, maybe it's not so bad after going 4-2 and 3 in non-conference play. All rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. Yes, it is a game day. Time for game notes. Okay. Everything you need to be paying attention to closely tonight as you prepare as a fan for the Cougars and Aggies version 2022. Jeremy, we will start with this. BYU, a 24-point favorite, but the Cougars are dealing with a rash of injuries. Utah State has notably been a little bit banged up. They certainly have not been playing good football. So for BYU, even with the injuries in store, and all the rivalry storylines. Is it cover, win by 24 or more, or bust? No, if there was a backdoor cover by uh, Utah State to cut it to 21, whatever, it's all good. I think BYU will win comfortably in this, though, because Utah State's going through something, and it doesn't have a ton to do with BYU. It has a ton to do with their issues uh, and injuries and ineptitude on the Aggie side of the ball. They've certainly had uh, problems. Uh, they barely beat Connecticut to start. They got blown out by Alabama 55 nothing. That might have broken their will in some way because the next week they lose at home to Weber State, and then they lose to UNLV, who's 3-1, and one, but it's UNLV, dog. 1-3, and three, that's tough. That's tough. And it, now they come to Provo with a motivated, excited, senior-driven, Jaron Hall-led BYU that is not going to drop this game. Now, the only, the only way this game changes is, is if there's, like, game-changing injuries on both sides, which is any football game for any team, it feels like. 
So hopefully everyone's good because there's been a history of that on both sides, not just BYU, on Utah State's as well. Everyone just be healthy and let's just play a yes, game and please, go home. Please, okay? please. So, yeah, it's not cover or bust, but I do believe BYU is going to blow the heck out of Utah State tonight. Okay, so 24-plus you feel confident in. Dare I say <laughs> yeah. 17-plus plus? We, plus we cool with it's that? It's a 17-plus plus game. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't feel like this game's a bust unless Utah State is within single digits in the fourth quarter. At that point, it just gets weird. And then everybody's uncomfortable. And even if BYU holds even on Utah to State win. would be like, whoa, yeah, why are we in this game? Even if BYU holds like, on to gross. win, you know, let's, let's say it's like an eight-point game and with ten minutes to play. It's just weird, right? BYU's a 24-point favorite. They're at home. It's a night game. We have spent so much time talking about how dominant BYU has been on their home field at 20, night. 22 and 1 since 29. It's time, it's time to put up again, right? It's time to show out again yep. under the Thursday night, night lights. Nostris Nocturnus. Own the okay, night. Own the night. We speak BYU this needs to do that tonight. It can't be a close game in the fourth quarter because that's the bust scenario for me. If BYU wins by 15 or 17, or I don't care. Great. Just don't have it be like a one score or a single digit game as we push into the fourth quarter because then who knows what happens. Maybe it's raining. Then there's a weird fumble. Like, it's a weird game sometimes. Take care of business. Start fast. BYU needs to start fast, and I believe they will. If BYU doesn't win by 21 plus, we're going to feel a little weird going into Notre Dame Wake. Okay, the second one. Will the BYU defense do its thing against a G5 again? Uh, yes. For all of the reasons I just presented, Thursday Night Lights, Lavelle Edwards Stadium, BYU's coming off of a somewhat meh performance against Wyoming, and they've been reminded of that all week. So I'm Banking on team wasn't enough. I'm banking See? on See? guys, you know, feeling like okay, we need to go out and handle business early. And BYU will have some injured players from uh, the Wyoming game back in this game for Utah State. So I, I feel like we'll see a more healthy version of BYU that should translate certainly on the defensive side to slowing the Aggies and keeping Utah State to 300 yards or fewer. I feel like BYU is in position once again to hold a team under the 300 yards of offense. And I ask you this question as you answer. What has Utah State done at any point this season, at any point this season, to make you think that they're going to come to Provo at night and all of a sudden put together like this incredible offensive game plan? Later, in a, in a moment, we'll talk about the difference that could be for Utah State. Okay. okay. But I believe that uh, BYU's defense will do its G5 thing again. 2-0, 286 yards, 22.5 points allowed. By the way, Utah State putting up a whopping 15.5 points per game. That's what I'm saying. It's so bad. Now, zero against Alabama certainly affects that. But you've played UConn, Weber State, and UNLV. Utah State should be 3-1. and one. Yeah, throw They're out one the Alabama three. game. You just look at the three opponents that we think, hey, Utah State should have handled. Like, the UConn game was weird. But I chalk that up to, okay, maybe it's just early, like, getting, you know. No, that was an indication that this cobweb. team had issues now. We exactly. See it. We exactly. see it. Now, when you lose to UNLV. I just UNLV, watched Avatar. I see you. When you lose to U UNLV and Weber State, um, Weber State by 28 hey, points. No they disrespect lost to Weber State. Great FCS team. Jay Hill, they do a great job. You can't lose at home to Weber State. By 28? You can't lose by one. Come well, on. I have no reason to believe that all of a sudden Utah State's going to be, like, incredible. You know, maybe there's some lineup changes. If Weber maybe State wins different. the national championship, maybe you tolerate that. Uh, okay. <laughs> fair, fair point. Like, maybe a little bit more like, maybe. yeah, but they won the national championship. But it was by 28 yeah. in Logan. Bad. Same city, I guess. It doesn't matter. It's the same city. Si Ogden and Ogden are Kay. the same city. Next game note. BYU has been really good at preventing big plays overall this season. Totally. Hey, really good. Will BYU allow a rush, specifically, of 20-plus yards? Because... In wins, there's uh, a common theme there, Jerem. Yes, uh, USF and Baylor and uh, Wyoming, 13, 13, and 19 were the longest rushes. No 20-plus runs. Yeah, there'll be some late weird run with the third string or something. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen to that. I mean, whatever. It's going to be like 21 yeah. yards. Yeah. Uh, it, okay. This doesn't really matter to me. It won't happen when the game's within 20. This is uh, just a another indication of BYU's defense being really good overall, we think. Yes. Even with injuries. That'd I know nice Oregon was – can we just That's say the that the, can we just say that the Oregon defensive game plan – and this happens sometimes in football. It was a swing and a miss. Like, they prepared for something, and Oregon did something entirely different. Like – that's tough. And BYU but it, didn't adjust quick enough. No, it happens in football. Yeah. But outside of that, 
BYU's defense has been really solid. So if we're thinking that, yeah, under 300 yards allowed to the opponent again. <laughs> Which is a crazy number. It's really good. It's pretty good. This Utah State team, I, I don't feel like they're explosive enough for us to be like, yeah, they're, they're going to run all over they BYU. They don't have 50-yard play. You know, they don't, no. Okay. So maybe, maybe one, and I'm kind of in the same, like, ilk as you where it's like, okay, maybe against the third stringers late in the game, like, they, they break off a big play. Don't doesn't care. matter. Okay, yeah. next one. Okay. Four different players have had a 100-yard receiving or rushing game this season. Will we see a fifth tonight? Ooh. So we've had Chris Brooks, Chase Roberts, Miles Davis, Keanu Hill. I'll go for 100 plus. It's got to be one of those, like, somebody not in that list. No, just will anybody have Oh, one? okay. So we can include those guys. Yeah. Then absolutely. Will someone have I'm, buy- I'm yeah. buying in on that. It's yeah. Been four we- different guys so far, which is crazy. Yeah. Maybe it's Gunnar Romney tonight. Maybe Gunnar what Romney. What if Gunnar just a, steps into this game party. where he caught his first touchdown pass in 2018 from one Zach Wilson? He returns tonight. And boom goes He's undoubtedly him. a deep threat. He becomes, yes. if he plays and is fully healthy, he automatically is vaulted number one deep threat. What I don't need, though, is him diving after a ball because he lacerated his kidney <sighs> on day three of fall camp. That's tough because he plays. Take it, take he, it easy. He plays with the cliche reckless abandon, right? Yeah. And that was part of what makes him great. But, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I'm yeah. like, uh, just, just be a little more cautious tonight. Yeah. I, I, he's the only guy that I just want to see a few snaps from. Just ahead of Notre Dame. Everyone else, I don't need to see Caleb Hayes, Max Tool, whatever. We're good. Yeah, it's going to happen again. Somebody's going to go for 100 plus. Miles Davis will get 100 plus. All right. Miles Davis. Okay. Right. Again. Now, Utah State and their quarterback, Logan Bonner, uh, things have not gone well. He was really, really good, but he had some unbelievable weapons last year that have now graduated on to the National Football League. And the wide receiver core that we talked about yesterday with Scott Gerard, the voice of the Aggies, has just not acclimated. Like, they've been... And frankly, they've been really bad. They have some good weapons, but they're not getting it, enough done. Yes, yeah. it's just it's just not working right now. Yeah. Uh, so if it's on Logan Bonner or the receivers, yes. I don't know. But Logan threw five interceptions last game. Yeah. Not great. He's At been home. he's You're been open. banged up. Do we expect to see former Orem High School star, the backup quarterback for the Utah State Aggies, Cooper Lega, who came in in the bowl game for Utah State last year and did a nice job? I guarantee he plays because I think. Either way for Utah State, especially if they're getting blown out, you need you, to change you something need to up. See you got to change something up. So they do this thing where they run, they run out both quarterbacks and other offensive players after a kickoff together, and then they break. So every time the crowd's like, "Is Cooper Lega going in?" Cooper Lega is a 49% passer in his career on 37 attempts, uh, attempts, two touchdowns, two picks. He was pretty good in the bowl game, 11 of 20, uh, 171, two touchdowns. Um, He's going up against his old Orem High teammates of Puka Nakua and Kingsley Suamati and Jacob Robinson, Ethan Slate, and Josh Singh. Here's uh, a couple of photos. They know each other. Cooper Lega was probably, I'm guessing, interested in BYU. BYU had its guys in Jacob Conover and eventually Cade Fennigan and Soljay Mava and whatnot and Jaron Hall, of course. So this is, this is uh, one of those games where you have an inside guy, perhaps, inside guy, perhaps he wants to show what he can do not only to his own fan base, but... BYU and its coaches. So I, that's the only sort of X factor for Utah State in my mind is what if Cooper Lega is the spark that gets them just going a little bit and maybe BYU struggling? I just don't see a way outside of, again, the, the we shall not name this situation. Barring that happening, that BYU doesn't just blow out Utah State. Yeah, I, listen, if the Aggies don't have a change of pace somewhere in a roster shakeup tonight, I'll be shocked. How like, about something? You try something different. You have nothing to lose. Logan Bonner has thrown more picks last two weeks than Jaron Hall has in his career. So if, if Logan Eight Bonner sits six. tonight and they put in Cooper Lega, I have zero issue with that. Just try something different. Okay, who needs to play to feel more comfortable about the roster against Notre Dame? Uh, we've already talked about one of them, Gunnar Romney. I feel like yeah. he needs to just get in there. I know people are like, look, he's a Division One athlete. He's been practicing. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it is. You kind of just need you need some game time to get ready for an even bigger game. So you got to sh- to shake off the okay, goblins. next week. Okay. I don't think Gunner's going to be super slow or anything. All in, in fact, everything <laughs> that I've heard is he looks amazing in practice right now, and he is ultra motivated and just so frustrated he hasn't been on the field. So maybe he's a little overhyped. Okay. He might get in a sportsman like penalty, just crack back block just to get in there tonight, you know? Gunner Gunner is at the top of the list uh that needs to play tonight. Uh outside of that, uh, and I know there are a laundry list of injuries for BYU, but 
I don't really feel like, man, there's somebody else that has to play. Maybe Earl Tuioti Mariner on the defensive line. I'd like to see get back in the game tonight for at least a few series and then get ready for the physicality of Notre Dame. Um, Max Tooley was a guy that was out last week, and I know people are like, man, we can't have Max. Like, Max Tooley does not need to play tonight. Like, if 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 his not, he's not feeling good and his ankle's not feeling okay, don't know. No. So, to me, it's just Gunner Romney. Are you going to add anybody It's only Gunner. I don't need to see anybody else. Yeah. Just Gunner. All right. Final no, and one. And even Gunner, I don't want him to have eight grabs for 122 and two touchdowns. I just want him to be out there a little bit enough to, like, I don't need you risking injury again. I want you for Notre Dame and Arkansas. I'm okay if Gunner only catches like three passes as long as one is a touchdown. Because That'd be nice. he may or may not be in my fantasy football starting lineup, which we will announce later in the oh, show tonight. Snap. Okay? Okay. Now, last one. Game notes. Weather is expected to be a little tricky tonight. There's a 40 to 50% chance of rain between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. slated in the Provo, Utah area. Thunderstorms, lightning expected, Jerem. Will weather be a factor in this game? Sounds like you just told us it was. Yeah. I, I don't want a lightning delay because that messes up with the momentum and the flow. And we've already had this with USF. Yeah, as long we've as the lightning before. delay is before the game starts, I'm okay with it. Just just don't start the game and then have to stop it. That is the yeah. worst. I, and listen, if this has to be a physical run game, hey, be always ready for that too. I, either way, be always ready for whatever. It doesn't matter. For the fan experience and the home field advantage that BYU has, obviously no weather would be nice for that. Yeah, I'm hoping not to see uh, a ton of rain. Like, if it rains between 4 and 6, whatever. You're the sideline reporter. Of course you don't want rain. Well, I can, You're on the field. I, there are places I can go and take shelter. <laughs> yeah, you're sheltered, <laughs> fed by thy good care. Okay. All right. Topic two, game day guarantees. Here's what I got for you. Guaranteed to not work. Actually, I cooled it a little bit. Okay. Mm. Number one, BYU will rush for two-plus touchdowns. Okay. They have two exactly in all three wins. Okay. okay. Number two, Cougars will have a positive turnover margin. Uh, I just expect Utah State to cough it up for BYU not to. BYU has been amazing at that. Okay. And three, BYU will have 500-plus yards of total offense. They have 500-plus in both G5 games. I don't think I said anything that's crazy whatsoever in what I just said. I hope to get all three. Mm. You need all three because what are you this season? Two for 12? I am. I don't care over. It doesn't matter. <laughs> My game day guarantees. BYU will score first. The Cougars have not scored first in the last two games. Didn't score first against Wyoming. BYU will score first tonight. Fast start against the Aggies. Jaron Hall will complete passes to at least six different receivers. Guarantee oh, that's going to happen. That. He can do that left hand. Like he's been so good at distributing the ball, right? Like yeah, that uh, guaranteed. Six he'll, is guaranteed. He'll find at least six different receivers. What well, nine? And <laughs> nine's nine's pushing Look that it. Six upside there's, down. There's some dudes that are still injured. We don't know what's going to happen with Puka and Chase. Number Throw three, the tight end. Jacob Conover, and also a tight end transferred. Jacob Conover, what? I guarantee, will take three plus snaps for BYU, which means he's in for at least one full series the tonight because series. BYU's in control. Yep. Guarantee that Jacob Conover takes three or more snaps tonight for BYU. I think we're going six for six. You think? Yeah. Be some... Guaranteed to go three for six, but I feel like we're going six. Here's what's going to happen. Maybe Utah State kicks a field goal first. They go up like Utah three, State has kicked one field goal in four <laughs> games, and it was against Connecticut. How about that? Okay. One. Or Jaron Hall, like, completes passes to five receivers. Only five? <laughs> it, there's always something where I would love to go six for six. I know. That's why we love it. It's not like what we think. Our question of the day. What do you want to see from BYU football tonight? All those injuries, maybe some looming questions after the Wyoming it. game. As the Cougars host Utah State, what do you want to see? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. Terry Christensen on Twitter says, I want to see different referees than last week. <laughs> now, someone on Twitter said they heard it's the same crew. Okay, so I looked at the thread. And? They followed up to the thread and said, uh, so erroneous, I've received different information. That's what I'm saying. It's like, not it's, the same it's crew. It's not going to be the same it's crew. It's not the same crew. Me. BYU would be Please like, no. Nice. Please no. Somewhere John Nelson is like, dang it. <laughs> I want another incomplete want pass another. to get picked up as a fumble so I can run 50 yards. Both these teams are in, like, the top, the bottom 20 of, like, most penalties. <laughs> or top of most penalties. <laughs> Join us in, like, five hours and 41 minutes for BYU Sports Nation game day. Six Eastern time. Hopefully weather's not a big deal for the show outside. I know they're here. You guys are here as well. Six Eastern, we got you covered for two full hours. Up next, a special guest. A guy we reference a lot on this show. Known only si or simply as Big Game.
Game Boomer. Hey! Beat the man behind the social media accounts. This is BYU Sports Nation. Got a name, John Whitaker. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. If you could write a letter to your younger self, what would you say? Ah! Good news. Who are you again? I'm a mental projection from the future that only you can see. I came back to prevent you from becoming a monster. <laughs> Wait, is this a hidden camera thing? This is a story about redemption. Giving someone a second chance to really become their best selves. I guess putting our heads together does make sense. He's not only saving himself, he's actually saving the world. Welcome back to Lavelle Edwards Stadium, live from Provo, Utah. Look at, Look at the Y. It's the homies sitting on top of the Y. Hanging out. No idea that we're putting them on yep. live TV, but it's all good. Yep, all this good. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports If you're out in the Y, we may shoot you. I am Spencer Linton alongside camera. Jerem Jordan. It is our pleasure to welcome onto the show for the first time a man who I've said we, we reference a ton on this show. Content contributor to the program yes. without knowing it. yes. He's known as Big Game <laughs> Boomer, as Jaron pointed out as we went to break. He has a name, too. Yeah, it's it's John name. Whitaker. Yeah. John, John, welcome to the show. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Happy to be here. First time in Provo. Welcome. Okay. I love great it. Great to have you. What, yeah. what do you think so far? It's awesome. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at this backdrop. I mean, it's it's insane. Um, I can tell you what, Big 12 fans are going to flock here once yes. you guys are in the Big 12. Because, I mean, this is the trip. I mean, it's going to be awesome. For sure. All yeah. right, John, uh, you have mastered lists and <laughs> hit the hearts and minds of college football fans nationwide. Some positively, some egging this them is, on. This is what is happens. Awesome. This is what happens when you make lists. Uh, yeah, uh, there, there's no bias. The good and the bad. Okay. <laughs> Just like our program. <laughs> yeah. When did this process start for you? So it started, I had never used Twitter until like November of 2020. Okay. It really had just got on, started kind of trash talking with fans. Once the season was over in 2021, I started just making these lists. Now, I'm an OU guy, so I made a list that was uh, schools that have more wins than Texas over the last 10 years, um, <laughs> kind of just trolling Longhorn fans, and that just kind of took off, went viral. And ever since then, I just – one idea after another, and I had like 50 followers in November of 2020, and it's just blown up. I mean, my articles and or li my list just show up – you know, on Sports Illustrated and USA Today. I mean, it's just, it's wild. That is um, wild. It's been crazy, and I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> okay, so we, we've we seen the list, and we use them because we're a daily show yeah. during summer. We love it, especially in May, June, and July. Yeah, they yeah, give, people, they give yes. fans, people, does it, like, they give fans yeah. stuff to talk about. It's not right. I mean, it's my opinion. Yes. Um, and it just, it makes for a great debate um, on, you know, atmospheres, players, I mean, everything. It, it's now, it's now, fun. Now, if BYU was low on the these lists. You're not on the program. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> BYU's high on the list, and the, and Utah's low, typically. Yeah. Uh, but it's also like, is it Ole Miss or Mississippi State that you have it out for as well? <sighs> right now, well, 
it, it just depends. Right now it's Ole Miss because, like, I, I rank, like, student sections and stuff, and I don't know if you guys saw the game last week. It, the student section was empty uh, at halftime. The, but the Grove is, is packed. Uh, everyone's having a good time down there. So right now it's Ole Miss. It just it kind of varies what, which fan bases are – are enjoying my content and which fan bases hate me. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it changes on a 24 hour basis. That's awesome. Absolutely. Big game. Boomer John Whitaker is on BYU sports nation. You mentioned you're an OU guy. Yeah. Did you go to school in yes. Norman? Yeah. I went to OU graduated t 2014. Um, so I'm an OU fan. So I'm hurt that we lost to Kansas state uh, yeah. last week. Yeah. That, that was not fun, but, uh, but yeah, I'm an OU guy. Did you hate BYU in 2009 when the Cougars won in Dallas? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what was that? That was, for, that was the Sam Bradford game. Yes. When he got hurt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. But, uh, Man, what, what got me on the BYU and the fan base and everything was I picked BYU to beat Utah last year. Uh -huh. I didn't think Charlie Brewer was the right quarterback for, for their system. You had seen him and at Baylor. Yeah, I saw him at Baylor. And so I picked them to BYU to win. And Utah fans were just like, oh, you're an idiot. You're crazy. You're like, blah, blah, blah. We've won eight years in a row. And, and BYU won. And ever since then... Uh, I've had a pretty good relationship with you. <laughs> <laughs> one pick over Utah will yep. do it. Yeah. No, it's a, shame. It's a shame you guys aren't playing them this year. Utah had to go down to Florida and, and lose when they should have been playing in, in the Holy War. Yeah, they, they should have <laughs> lost a game in Salt Lake yeah. uh, to BYU yeah. instead. That would have been nice. And that would have been a great game. I mean, that would have been a Absolutely. top 15 game. Yeah. Top 20 game early. Yeah. That would have been nice. I know people are still, some people are still holding out some, some just inkling of, of hope a that a game. bowl game happens. We, we had that in 2015 where they said, hey, we're not going to play for two years. And they didn't in 14. And then in 15, they met in a bowl game. So it was only <laughs> one go. year. Hopefully hey, it happens maybe. this year. Okay. So walk us through sort of what this, uh, these lists have meant because now you started like a podcast and yeah, I've got more a going on, right? Yeah. I mean, I've got a podcast. Uh, me and my little brother uh, just kind of started it up. It's kind of gaining traction. I mean, we do one every week. I mean, I don't, I don't have called? time. It's just called the Big Game Boomer podcast. Um, I've had Power Five coaches uh, on the show, like Shane Beamer and Jed Fish from Arizona. That's pretty good. Jed man. Fish is a great guy. Yeah, he is a great guy. I like seeing Arizona uh, improving. Um, but yeah, it's just it's kind of just for fun, and you know, we're having a good time with it. But it's for college football fans. I mean, if they want to check out good content, you check out the podcast. Where do you see this thing evolving and uh, developing? Man, if I'd have told you two years ago that I'd be sitting here, you know, <laughs> with you guys, I would have told you, I'm, you're crazy. So I have no. I'm just kind of enjoying the ride, man. It's uh, it's been crazy. Um, all the just connections I've made and everything. I mean, it's just kind of blown up into a college football. I mean, people like my name's John Whitaker, but everyone calls me <laughs> Big Game Boomer. You're big, like, that's I, your name. Yeah, like if you if I, we went to. Bam Bams, and we're like, hey, this is John Whitaker. They'd be like, who? So they're like, <laughs> Big Game Big Boomer. Game Boomer. Oh, oh, yeah, there you, we go. Yes. Yeah, so. that, that's you. That's, yeah, awesome. that's your identity yeah. for sure exactly. with college football. Okay, tell us about sort of how you're feeling about two years, uh, we think, of OU and Texas in the Big 12, the new Big 12, yeah. and then the SEC and all that, and what the new Big 12 will look like, and maybe more teams from the Pac-12. I, they I like it. I mean, I like. I think the Big 12 is set up better now without OU in Texas. Um, I thought, when, what was it, like 2017, 2016, when they were going to add, they started talking about expanding, they should have added the schools that they, are, they added uh, last year then. Um, and maybe OU and Texas don't leave. But uh, I, I think it's set for success. I mean, they went up and got the probably the best four, you know, group of five teams and, and expanding. If you can get the four corner schools, um, I know Colorado is just is terrible right now. But, I mean, it's going to be a great basketball conference for one thing. But um, – from top to bottom, it's going to be a competitive league, um, especially with Kansas playing good now. Yeah, four it's, uh, Yeah, Kansas. four zero. Yeah, they're they're killing it right now. Now we should point out that Kansas is in a four way tie for second in our Big Twelve plus we, four power rankings. We make lists. We, we make lists. Lists. Too. Yeah, There you go. But That's we a good make lists. So yeah. Yeah, you can take a look at our <laughs> totally unbiased Big Twelve now, plus four this power week rankings. We mailed it in. <laughs> Boomer, because we couldn't figure out who the second five, best team in the Big 12 plus five was. way uh, tied for second. So, so yeah. there's our graphic. What do you think? We got Oklahoma State as the best team in the league at the moment. Yeah, because Oklahoma lost. So yeah, they no, do I one. agree. I agree. We got BYU, Baylor, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Kansas tied for second. We're How's not really that? sure who the second best team in the yeah. conference. What I, do you think? I feel like we'll know who the second best team is on Saturday. Yeah. Or, uh, after Baylor and OSU play, OSU just hasn't played anybody yet. Okay. Um, Baylor, Baylor's been one. tested. I mean, they came up here. Lost in a great game, but I mean, they went on the road to Iowa State. Always tough. Yeah. Um, so, 
I, right now, I think Baylor's the best team. Um, but but Oklahoma State has Spencer Sanders. Um, he's been there for like seven years now. <laughs> <Flights out. laughs> but their defense, their defense is not what it was last year. I mean, they've gotten gashed by Central Michigan um, and Arizona State. So we'll see. I, 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 yeah, I, I Baylor see is right the best now. team. I think yeah, I that, think Baylor's the best team. That would be the best possible thing for BYU because win, right? Oh, win over because if, if they win the Big Twelve again. Yes, we hope Baylor's in the top three in the league, so yeah. that win just matters. Although. You know, unless BYU only has one loss, it's whatever. BYU's going to whateverbowl.com. Yeah. I'd like to see you. I'd like to see. If BYU wins out, they should definitely be in a New Year's Six Bowl. It'd be nice. There's only one at large this year. Yeah. Because of the bowl rotation with the Peach and Cotton. So well, I did know is that tough. BYU is technically not a group of five school. Correct. So they would not get that top right. group Correct. of five. I did not know that until this B- year. So that's BYU unfortunate. chose to be in its own space like Notre Dame, although Notre Dame has exceptions that BYU does not. So, yeah. yeah. Next year, that's not an issue. Yeah. No, but also next year, BYU is going to play 10 Power Fives for the first time. There'll in be the plenty history. of opportunity, yes, to go and prove it next year. Not to say that there is an opportunity this year with Notre Dame and Arkansas still looming, but first Utah State. So why the Utah Utah State game for you as your first experience in Utah? Well, I was going to go to the Baylor game, um, but I, I just it, it's hard for me because I'm watching all the games. It, it's just easier for me to get up here for like a Thursday night game. I had to get up to Provo uh, for, for a game. Um, and I thought, you know, going into the season, I thought Utah State would be a pretty decent opponent yeah. for, for BYU, but they've, you know, fallen off a cliff uh, this season. So, I mean, it's a rival, in-state rivalry, and, you know, I just I had to get up here and check out Provo. Well, we're glad you're here. We're yeah. glad that you have uh, now been officially welcomed into BYU Sports Nation. Yeah. Um, and we'll call you whatever you want us to call you. We can call you John Whitaker, or we can just keep calling you Big Game Dude, Boomer. Big Game Boomer, BGB, BGB. Boomer. Yeah, that, that's go. what everyone – yeah, when I do spaces and stuff, like on Twitter, everyone calls me BGB. <laughs> It's, I love uh, it, It's dude. wild, man. It's great. It's wild. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, enjoy your time, yeah. and uh, hopefully you have a great experience at the game tonight. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you all for having Thanks me on. Coming. You got it. Okay, join us tomorrow, uh, the rare day after recap of the game, noon Eastern, of course, here on BYU Sports Nation, on BYU TV and BYU Radio. And how much Jacob Conover do you want to see tonight in that backup quarterback role against Utah State? Is everyone still superstitious about the starting quarterback? This is BYU Sports Nation. Or just about a blow BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Wrapping up in a minky couture luxurious blanket, Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU BYU Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. That's why BYU football exists, is because of the fans. To have a bunch of fans that want to see you be aggressive, I think everybody can live through our 123 guys on the roster and the 11 that are on the field at a time. Really, it all starts and ends with the fans. This is BYU Sports Nation. Make sure to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. 
He's Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linson. We are live in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Beautiful day in Provo. Time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Spender, how much Jacob Conover do you want to see in tonight's game? Well, I'd like to see him for at least three plus snaps because I just put that down as one of my game day guarantees. Guarantee, so, it's gonna happen. Uh, the more the the more the better, frankly, because uh, if Jacob Conover is playing a ton, that would essentially mean that BYU is in control. The or other reason, else. or something else, but I'm not going to talk about that. I know. I'm not going to say the other option. I didn't think I was that uh, stitious, but the more we sort of dance around because that, because of this game and the history I, of this game. I, no, yeah, exactly right. Chucky Keaton included. Logan Bonner. Ah, good yeah. gravy. Jared Hall has been injured in this game. I don't want anyone injured in this game either side. 100% health. So three, three, Go. four snaps. Just allowed the final drive. That's what I want to see Jacob Connor in this game. Final drive. How final about that? Drive. Yeah. You cool with that? Maybe, am, maybe the last two drives? I am cool with that, right. dog. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jaron Hall, Blake Freeland, and Clark Barrington are all currently on Mel Kuyper's top 10 prospects at their specific positions. If you had to say right now, which one of those guys will be drafted first? Jaron is pacing for that at the moment as perhaps the, you know, fourth quarterback taken. And if it's a good quarterback class, which it looks like it might be in the first round, I'd love my Seahawks to take him. But uh, in the last three drafts, there have been an average of five offensive tackles ta taken in the first round. If Blake Freeland sneaks into the top five, he could go first round as sure. well. Right now, I feel like Blake Freeland is a late first round projection, which is totally fair, which is awesome, right? Incredible. Jaron Hall has the capability to rise really fast. He already has risen a ton. He'll crush the combine, too. That's the thing. People will love his attitude, his mentality, because he's extremely genuine. He's very, very well thought out, well spoken. He'll run a very four, intelligent. He'll, he'll run, run like a, a four-four. He'll run a four-five, probably. I mean, something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, he might run a low four-five. He doesn't need. You don't, don't need be a, surprised to see him run like a four-four-nine or something like yeah, that. Yeah, if he runs four-four, great. Four-five is plenty at quarterback. Trust he's me. He's gonna crush the combine, and that, this it could very well push him into like a top twelve pick. And if both are second round picks, I'm still. It's great. Stupid happy. It's great. Because that's amazing. It's hard to get in the first round. What do you expect from Zach Wilson Sunday as a first start at Pittsburgh? Certainly some rust uh, and probably a little bit overzealous, like a little over anxious. Is overzealous a word? It isn't is. Isn't it just zealous? Well, it's over. It's two words. It's over and zealous. But isn't zealous over already? Because well, you're, if you're zealous, you're more than the Well, average. it's just an exaggerated. So you're word. over it's the like, over? It's over the top. It's over the top. It's too much. I just much. feel like, like overzealous. It be accelerated. Well, you can go fast, and then you can just, like, go, you know, ludicrous speed, right? Super Superman. Okay. So I, I expect things to be a little sped up for Zach Wilson. And that's okay. You know, there, there will be some rust. He hasn't played uh, a game all year. It hasn't taken a snap all year. So probably a couple of interceptions. Uh, but he'll, he'll throw a couple. He'll you know, provide a couple of touchdowns, 200 yards passing, something like that. So probably 200 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. How about that? What if he just comes out and he's like three touchdowns, no picks. They went, beat Pittsburgh. Everyone's like, Jets are going to the Super. No, that's not going to happen. But, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if he came out and had a really solid game and the Jets somehow won that game on the road. That'd be nice. Yeah. Like, that he talk. was efficient, didn't turn yes. the ball over. He's got five straight games without a pick. Keep that going. Yeah. Zach Wilson, uh, in many people's eyes, won the offseason. It's time for him to win in the actual season. Well, then. Well, then. Dennis Go Dodd Cubs. is on the conference expansion beat again, reporting that the Big Ten could offer Washington, Oregon, Cal, and Stanford, and the Big 12 is ready to offer the four corner schools, including Utah, if that happens. Jerem, do you think, in your heart of hearts, that there will be a version of the Pac-12 in three years? No, yeah. I think it'll be the Pac-10. Just kidding. Uh, no, I don't believe that it will exist in three years. Really? And the, that the four corners will... Where's the TV contract, by the way? Where they, is it? They talk so much even, about it even and how if it's they, evolving. Even if they sign that, they're probably not going to do it for long, and they'll be able to buy out of it. Like, where is it? I'm trying to convince myself that the Pac-12 is going away. But I just can't it imagine. Is. I can't imagine college football in the world of college sports that we live in without some version of the Pac. So I, I feel like there will be some version of it's it. It's just called a Pac In three years. Numberless group. Okay. They might not be a Power 5 conference, but I feel like there will be some version of the Pac. Is soccer doing better than we thought because the RPI is 20? Uh, well, the RPI is beneficial, but 
uh, they've let some opportunities slip away. So I'm glad the RPI is good, but BYU is still pacing to maybe host a single game and then have to go and play some incredibly tough opponent in the second round. I just hope BYU makes a tournament. Also, no overtime has really affected this because BYU has three ties. Getting used to there. that. Jen yeah. Rockwood had 22 ties the previous 27 years. Now she has three because no overtime. You would have had a winner or a loser in those situations, most of them probably, with the oh, uh, two overtimes. Six, yeah, 20 extra minutes. So that affects it too. But yeah, 20 is nice. How about some BYU basketball, Jerem? When you see Atiki Ali Atiki do this, what is your reaction? I mean, just throw it down. That's I hope he's okay because he fell down. That's some significant. Those are significant boosties, as yeah. my brother Trevor he's, would say. He's throwing down on one of the team managers, Ooh. by the way, which, hey, did, didn't contest all the way. But isn't, hey, that, isn't that team manager like athletic. a 6 nine, it. Isn't it a 6 9 team manager or graduate assistant? No. no okay. I don't think he's 6 9. That guy? No. Woo. Like 6 5. Okay. Listen to complete coverage. I, I met that kid. I don't know his name, but I, I, he seemed cool. Let's hang out. Uh, listen to complete coverage of BYU and Utah State tonight. 6 Eastern time. Cougar pregame live gets you going on BYU Radio. ESPN's Matt Berry is on the call tonight with Lewis Riddick. Matt's hey. going to join us next on BYU Sports Nation. We probably owe him a dollar for this. He's, Stay he's, with us. He's going to join the program. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Lavelle Edwards Stadium Dude, in Provo. What a day. What a we scene. see this every stinking day, but it is so beautiful, especially in September where the weather's tolerable. Yeah. Like it's nice right now. You know what I mean? October, it's tolerable. November, we're like huddled up. But this is awesome, man. We don't get to do night. this in stadium very often. Once this year. Yeah. Let's go. And so uh, we're, we're rolling out the blue carpet, if you will, for some big time guests. Our next is the man who will call the game tonight on ESPN with Lewis Riddick. Very, very talented play-by-play -play man and studio host for ESPN. Matt Berry is yeah. on BYU Sports Nation. Matt, great to have you on the show as you make your debut here. Hey, Spencer Jam, this is great. I mean, you guys kind of said the debut, first time here in Provo. I'm uh, just trying to, to soak up, to me, what is, like, picturesque-wise, one of the greatest atmospheres in college football. And you back that up with the history of what BYU football has meant around the country. I, look, we're excited for tonight. When we got our Thursday night schedule, I pointed to this game tonight. I said, that wagon wheel, we're playing for that. <laughs> and you've got, you know, like, it's going to be a good one tonight. We're excited. And 
certainly when it was originally on the schedule, you thought Utah State would probably bring them more, more to the matchup. It certainly hasn't gone that way for them, but there's a lot of storylines in this one. It feels like one of the top ones, if not the top one, is the way that Jaron Hall has played. I know you guys have been impressed on the college football uh, final and other shows that you're on, but he, he was dynamic last week. We'll see if he can keep that going because he's pacing for something special in the NFL draft next year. Yeah, and Jim, that's one of the things when you look at with Jaron and, and how he's progressed throughout the season. Well, here's what happens, and you guys know this. You, you get a quarterback that you talk about, right? Maybe a whisper, maybe a slow audible on, on who he is. And then little by little, the hype around the player grows. And that's kind of where I think we are with Jaron Hall. The fact that he's, you know, he's been full-time football. Everybody knows the story by now. And if they don't, we'll tell it's not on the broadcast. How if not playing baseball, there's a chance he would have beat out Zach for the starting quarterback job. And now it's his. And it's been his. And he's kind of growing nationally into a player that I think by the end of this season, you're going to be talking about as a, a legitimate consideration for a first-round pick. I know Lewis Riddick loves it. And so tonight, on a Thursday night, and that's the beauty of Thursday night college football. Saturday is great because there's so many games going on at once, but that's just it. There's how many games every window? 16 games across the country nationally televised. Tonight, if if you're curious about BYU and you're curious if this Jaron Hall kid is legit with what we've heard about the hype, this is a perfect opportunity not only for him, but for Kalani and BYU to have the audience all to themselves to kind of show that maybe the Oregon loss was a little bit of an aberration. Yeah. And with the schedule that's coming up with Notre Dame and Arkansas, this is a good night for the program to kind of have the college football country to themselves. Matt Berry of ESPN is with us on BYU Sports Nation, and you've led me into my next question because we've seen a little bit of everything from BYU. Certainly the blowout at USF was a great start. You come home, win a dramatic double overtime game against Baylor, and then kind of go and lay an egg on the road against an ultra-motivated Oregon team who was looking to prove something after they were embarrassed by Georgia, and BYU beats Wyoming by 14. So, Matt, after what you've seen from BYU and kind of the polar opposites of the Baylor and Oregon game, what what is BYU in the national spotlight? What does the national media think of BYU after four games? Matt Spencer, look, BYU nationally is, I think, who everybody believes they are and can be. They are physical. If there's one thing Kalani's done over the past couple of years, the 10 and 2 season, the 11 and 1 season, physically up front, they're going to beat you for four quarters. That's just been the MO. That's just who they are. Offensively, they don't do anything that makes you say, wow. They just do a lot really, really well. And they're disciplined. They're going to play for four quarters. And that's why, I mean, you guys know this, being college football fans, unless you're maybe Alabama or Georgia, you're going to have a week where you're just facing a team and you just don't play your best. Yeah. That, that was Oregon. I, I believe that Oregon was an outlier relative to, as you said, motivated after just getting absolutely embarrassed on national TV against Georgia and BYU not playing up to their potential. Now, if they don't start fast tonight, I think we'll, we'll cover that on the broadcast. You guys, last week against Wyoming wasn't exactly the greatest start, but they finally figured it out in the second half. And so if they come out and play like we saw in week one, start a little quicker than they've been, I still believe this is a top 15 team in the country, which, by the way, with the games they have coming up on their schedule, it's all in front of this team to, again, reach that national attention that I believe talent-wise, especially with Gunner coming back, we'll see when Puka comes back. I, look, it's a talented football team, and so tonight is going to be kind of that next step in getting people back onto the BYU national bandwagon. I'm waiting for the Pete Thamel uh, update on uh, Gunner and Puka. It seems like every week he's been the guy that's had that. Hey, it's an early week now. Uh, let's go. For BYU, the depth has been notable because you have uh, Trumpet playing Miles Davis uh, with 100-plus yeah. last week. Keanu Hill goes off. It's not been who BYU thought it would be at the beginning of the year. It's been interesting. So what have you thought of sort of the personnel of BYU? Because we don't exactly know who's going to lead BYU in rushing tonight. 
Yeah, so it, I think it's a great question because one of the things that the, the Utah State coaching staff was actually telling us about Jaron is how impressive he's been this season, but he's been doing it without his weapons, without Gunner, without Puka. A lot of injuries on the offensive side of the ball. Try to get the running backs going, and Miles Davis was the guy in the second half last week that kind of gave them that jolt that they needed because they were kind of stuck in the mud for a while. And all that does, I think, for Kalani and this offensive staff is it gives them an opportunity, A-Rod calling ball plays, to say, hey, look, I've got Gunner back. We're going to see exactly what he is tonight. That's part one. Part two, is Miles one of those guys that can give us an early shot in the arm? We know what Kato is going to give. That guy is so disciplined in who he is as a runner. But if you're an offensive play caller, and you've got the quarterback playing the way he's playing. Isaac Rex is always going to be a player to watch. He's just a fun tight end. I know Lewis and I both like him. But if Miles shows up and is like, you know what, maybe that was his coming out party a week ago, then you're talking about three stable running backs and potentially a home run threat that can get confidence week in and week out. And that's all college football is. We see young running backs every week, and they tell us all the time. When we called the Pittsburgh game or the West Virginia game, West Virginia Pitt, they've got a young freshman running back, C.J. Donaldson. And they told us, hey, look, with freshmen, it's all about confidence. With younger backs, it's all about confidence. Picking up pass protection, learning the scheme. If, if Miles is now starting to get that experience over the past couple of years and now last game, it's just another weapon. And, and that makes BYU even more multidimensional. Matt Barry of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. I think every BYU fan right now is kind of wondering, Matt, what's the realistic ceiling for this team? Just maybe, like, what if this team could figure it out against Notre Dame and Arkansas and put together something special? What's the realistic ceiling for BYU in the regular season, do you think? So I said it on our, our production call this morning. I would take BYU now over Notre Dame. I think they're the better football team especially if they can get 100% healthy. And that's kind of the blessing of a Thursday night game. I know it's a short week coming off the prior game, but now look, you have till October 8th to get healthy for Notre Dame. So I like him against Notre Dame. Arkansas for me is going to be uh, the matchup where you can really see BYU get back into this top 10 conversation, new year six conversation, because that, all in all likelihood is going to be a ranked Arkansas team from the SEC who's coming to town. Yeah. Now, having said that, Arkansas has Alabama this week. Alabama has the tendency to break a lot of people. Arkansas coming off a loss a week ago to Texas A&M when they had the lead 14 nothing Could have been 21 nothing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as he's pointing out, could have been 21. So we lost Matt just for a second. Is, is he back with us? If he's back with us, we'll bring him back in. Okay, so Matt, you were saying, so they could, it could have been 21 nothing, and that's where you cut off. What were you going to say after that? Yeah, my apologies for the hotel internet here. <laughs> it could have been 21-7, and, and Arkansas could have gone in that game against Texas A&M and run away with it. So they're teetering a little bit. You've got, B, you've got Alabama this weekend who can break a lot of teams, but if BYU, I like him against Notre Dame, if they can get a visiting Arkansas team and with the one loss on the season, I think at that point it would be, what, five, five and one, six and one? Yeah, yeah. Guys, New York six is a possibility with Liberty after that, East Carolina, Boise State. Look, that's why I'm so excited about this team because there's going to be two games on their schedule where they're going to get to have a legitimate say and what their postseason is going to be. Love it. Matt, great to catch up with you and uh, welcome you officially to BYU Sports Nation. Looking forward to your call on ESPN tonight and uh, having you and Lewis and the crew here in uh, Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Guys, the hospitality has been great. We cannot wait to get over the stadium. We anticipate a fun football game tonight, and I'm looking forward to seeing this team in person. They've been very impressive so far. Fantastic stuff. Thanks so much, Thanks, Matt. Matt. All right, guys, you got Take care. Okay, Matt Berry of ESPN, super talented studio yeah, he's host. Fun. I, I really enjoy college football. Really fun playing. on the Thursday nice night job. call. And it's, uh, I meant what I said. It's cool to have them in town for this, this rivalry Let's game. Let's go. Okay. Uh, make sure you check out Coordinator's Corner coming up every Monday on demand right now on BYSN.com if you missed it. I don't know of another show like this in the country where the coordinators talk on uh, a TV show. So check it out. And up next, is Jerem finally going to get his fantasy football win now that Zach Wilson is good to go? Tell me you're starting Zach Wilson. This is BYU Sports Nation. Zach, you got a score for me. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
Accidents don't just happen nine to five, they happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven, nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, Ooh, quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Tell the hell. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. 10 seasons going from never knowing to finding answers. Wondering how you belong to finding where you fit. 10 seasons of questioning what might have been to embracing a bright future. I was able to put a big piece of my family together. I was getting answers that I had been wondering about. On Relative Race, new beginnings, new adventures, new connections. Stream a new season of Relative Race, season 10. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Subscribe, rate, and review to the podcast as well. Time for BYU Sports Nation Fantasy Football Friday. But on a Thursday, because BYU is playing on a Thursday, uh, reminder, points are awarded on offense for yards, gain, and touchdowns, defensively for tackles, tackles for lost sacks, tech, takeaways, and touchdowns. And uh, if you have a kicker, field goals and extra points on special teams. We got to go. I'm dropping Jake Oldroyd. I'm grabbing Miles Davis. My starters, Zach Wilson, Ben Bywater, Miles Davis. Okay. Come on, Zach. I think you've got a Come shot on this Miles. week. You finally got a quarterback in there, and you got BYU's, we think, hot hand running back. My Obviously the hot end. Week yeah. five starters as I try and get to five and zero oh this season. Old reliable Jaron Hall has been unbelievable this year for my fantasy football team. Fred Warner is my defender, and Gunnar Romney makes his first appearance in my fantasy football starting three. Our elite voice today presented by Pax Healthcare Elevated. Andrew Garrett on Twitter says, "What I want to see tonight is I want to see dairy farm seized, nice. cattle branded with wise, and." A pile of cow chips burned in Lavelle's great name. It went to Utah State. <laughs> Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics, and we give it to the Bills family, specifically Kelly Bills, whose wife Emily recently and so tragically unexpectedly passed away. Uh, our thoughts and concern and prayers are certainly with the entire Bills family. Yeah. Just an unbelievable tragedy that they're dealing with right now. We just want to send our love. Hopefully this message finds them and finds them uh, and gives them some sort of comfort and peace. Amen to that. All right. Uh, our thanks to today's guests, John Whitaker, Big Game Boomer, and Matt Berry of ESPN. Sorry to Dennis. Ran out of time. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Thor Salanoa. BYU football tonight. BYU Sports Station game day, 6 Eastern. Go Cougs.